joining us. Um, I have the pleasure of interviewing Miss La Gente Legacy herself, Kimberly Sanchez Cawthorn. Um, so Kim and I met um, well back maybe a couple years ago now, and we've been working on some other things together. Um, I'm a writer also, so we've just been, you know, working working together on different things. But uh, I want to go ahead and let her introduce herself and tell us a little bit about yourself, Kimberly, for those who don't know you. Well, thank you, Christina, for giving me this, this opportunity. I know I'm usually on the other side of these, <laughs> so it's a little, a little strange. And I'm um, originally from San Luis, the oldest town in Colorado. I um, grew up there. My family has been there for seven generations on both sides. And before that, our family was in New Mexico since 1598. So probably about 14 generations on both sides in the same area. So um, I'm native to Colorado and to the Southwest. Um, I went to college in Colorado Springs and uh, at Colorado College. And I um, believe that's probably where the seeds of love and legacy, amor eterno, were planted. Um, just lots of different things that happened during those four years, um, including lots of questions around my identity and why we called ourselves Spanish where I grew up. And so um, I learned to, you know, just do a lot of research um, looking into why we spoke the way we spoke, why we called ourselves the way that we called ourselves. And I just learned to love genealogy from there. And so uh, it's sort of been my passion ever since. And um, when um, a couple of years ago, I decided that I needed to do something with all of this information that I had um, accumulated. I started seeing little stars of David everywhere and some of the genealogical work that I did and found out through DNA that we are actually connected to Sephardic Jews um, from Spain. And so that comes, the one line that we know for sure is on the Sanchez side and that dates back to 1666 um, to a man named Pedro Sanchez de Inigo, and uh, his mother's, his grandmother's maiden name was Sanchez de Inigo, and they came from Spain, and um, and they were Sephardic Jews. And so uh, I just, I find all of that work and that, you know, the history so fascinating. And so um, I, again, knew that I had to do something with all of that information, and I wasn't sure what to do. And one day my son asked me um, if I would write with him because he was doing a project for school. And so I said, sure. So I had already done a bunch of little notes here and there on my laptop, um, I mean, on my iPad. And some of it was, um, you know, just little scenes here and there. Some of it was sort of written in a movie script. So I started putting it all on my new computer. And lo and behold, the floodgates opened after that. And I wrote the story in about a month and a half. And so I just, I was writing before people woke up. I was writing after they went to bed. I was writing while people, the kids were at school. Yeah, a few months later, I had this story written, and it's just been such a beautiful, amazing journey. So oh, fulfilling ever since. Yes, what a journey. Well, I want to go back. I do want to talk more about the book, but I want to go back a little bit to um, talking a little bit more about yourself. So you're a teacher, right? You're a teacher. You're a mother. Yes. Talk a little bit about that, just so people could know him as the whole, as a whole, the whole person. Picture. Well, I have two beautiful, beautiful babies, a 12-year-old who's no longer a baby, he's a young man, <laughs> and, and an, an eight-year-old daughter, and uh, they just are the highlight of my life. Um, you know, they, when you become a mom, everything changes, and you sort of start to see life in such a different way, and so, yeah, they challenge me, um, they teach me, um, they make me laugh every single day. And so, yeah, it's such a joy um, to have those two beautiful children with me all the time. And so, um, yeah, those are my babies. I uh, actually started um, uh, teacher education when I was in, in Colorado Springs many years ago before I came out to Denver and uh, started the program. And then I got an emergency license to teach Spanish at a middle school. And I had every single kid from sixth through eighth grade. Um, and I was in this auditorium, auditorium building all by myself <laughs> and because it was a district school that was converting to a charter school. So there was essentially two schools within the campus. And so I was kind of alone in the auditorium building and, you know, I had all of these kids, some of them spoke Spanish, some of them didn't. It was just 
uh, an incredible immersion experience into what teaching was like. And so I, um, I did it. I had fun with them. We baked bread. We made a mural. We danced. <laughs> we did all kinds of fun stuff and tried to learn Spanish in the process. But then I decided I wanted to work with kids in a different way. Uh, and I moved out of Colorado Springs and I eventually came out to Denver. And so I started doing nonprofit for a while. Um, and I worked with kids in the nonprofit world for a little bit. And uh, then I did some grant writing and consulting um, for nonprofits. And then I got the teaching bug again and I decided I wanted to go back. And so I did the Better Teachers Program, which is a master's uh, program um, coupled with a residential teaching program. So you're basically immersed in teaching, you know, the whole time. So you're taking courses while at the same time you're with a mentor in, in the classroom. And so I did that and I got my master's in 2006 and I taught up until my son was born. Um, and I decided I wanted to be at home with, with my babies. I wanted to be a stay at home mom. I wanted to be the one that saw their first steps and heard their first words and, you know, do all of that stuff with them. And so um, I did that and all the way up until um, last year, you know, I did, I did work for Regis University for a little bit. I taught in their Master of Arts in Education program, um, courses like multicultural education and foundations for teaching the culturally and linguistically diverse. Um, so I've kind of done a lot of crazy, you know, cool stuff along the way and met some really incredible, amazing people. Um, and, you know, I, wrote I just wanted to highlight the other things that you do because it's like, I think you're all of these things and you're a writer, not like you're just a writer, you know, you can do so many things. And I just wanted to point that out because, you know, I just know people are, some people are listening. They just wonder, you know, are you a full-time writer? You know, I think those are some of the questions that people would have, or if they want to write themselves, some people think that they can't do it because, you know, they work and they're doing other things in life, but you can do all those things and be a writer. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I learned through this process is that, um, you know, even when you do get that bug, like I, you know, the floodgates opened for me when I wrote the first book, um, some days are easier than others to write, you know, and you just have to, um, you have to do it every day. You have to sort of create a schedule for yourself, whatever works for your life. You have to do, I started out with just writing 30 minutes every single day. And then it, you know, I was able to work it out to where it was two hours because um, although the writing of the story was kind of the easy part, the editing was the harder part. And so I had to take that time to discipline myself to just devote a certain amount of time every single day to doing it. And, and also to research, you know, not just the writing and the editing and that kind of stuff, but um, but you know the research of uh, what the industry was like, you know, because I come from education, I come from nonprofit, so this was a whole new world. Yeah, so you know, just taking a few minutes every single day to do it, uh, dedicate yourself to learning about your craft. Um, I also joined a lot of different Facebook groups and I did a lot of research on, you know, simple things like. Um, how to uh, bring out more of that sensory detail in your writing and, you know, how to say certain things because, you know, if you say, you know, he wrapped his arms around her and kissed her like a thousand times, it just, you know, it loses its meaning. So you have to learn how, how to um, use, immerse yourself in where your characters are and try to figure out what they would be thinking and what they would be doing and what they're feeling is the wind blowing is the sky dark you know what what are they experiencing and you have to find a way to to um to describe that and and there's so many resources out there to help you know to to do that and so um even though even one word you know could be said or written many many different ways so and i also think too that you know reading makes you a better writer you know? yes and uh, so that's that's some of the things that just a little tips that you can do just to make you a better writer. I think that that thanks for sharing that. I think that's really important too. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about this book because I really want people. The, the reason I'm doing this because I asked him to do this, everybody, <laughs> because she was doing it on so many people and highlighting all the you know successful people. And then she went to um, interviewing some of the founding members of Palma, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And I was like, Kim, you don't have a video, so I'm not the greatest host, but I said, let's, let's do it. So, uh, you know, because I want to help promote your book too. And I mean, your book is really new still, you know? So I think that, you know, you really have to promote your book at least for a couple of years, you know? Thank you. Um, 
but yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come, wanted to have you on here soon so we could talk about your book. But anyway, um, so let's, if you wanted to tell me a little bit about this, I'll just kind of set it up for people. Um, so this book is based, well, starts in Spain in th around 1595. And Kim tells the story of Catalina and Benjamin, right? And uh, those are great, great, great grandparents of the main characters. Do you want, do you want to talk about it a little bit? Explain how that goes without yeah. going too much more because we do want people to buy, we do want people to buy this book, but let's, let's talk about it a little bit. So my idea, again, I, I kept hearing about all of this. It's loosely based on my genealogy, um, and I'm a hopeless romantic, so I kind of combined the two. <laughs> so um, I had this idea about um, what if there was a couple in the middle of the Inquisition that was in love, and they got separated by the Inquisition. And one family fled to Turkey, um, which many Sephardic Jews uh, fled to different parts of the world, and that was one of the hubs where they went to. Um, and then the other, because it was right at the, around the time of you know the voyages out to the Americas, and so and the other family would flee to Mexico City, and then lo and behold, 400 years later, their descendants would meet, um, you know, in a random place, and they would have this connection that they didn't understand, um, and they would turns out that they're descendants of the couple from 1595, 1598. Well, well and what I love about it too is because you know I love magical realism. So there's a little sprinkle magical realism in there, which I also love. And uh, I, I read this book finally this summer because, you know, I had a lot of books to read, but I couldn't put it down. Once I grabbed it, I was like, it took me probably two, or maybe three days to, to read it because I just was nonstop with it and I, you know, finished it. But really, it's, it's a love story, you know, it's, a, it's really a love story. And it really did, I'll talk about it in a minute, but it made me more curious about my genealogy too, because this is stuff that we just really don't know. Yeah. And I think when people ask about like our history and where you're from, you know, a lot of people don't realize that back then a lot of things weren't documented. No. You know, so we didn't have records, and especially if you came from, um, you know, very underserved communities, um, that's not readily available to people. Right. So that really made me, this book made me curious about that too. So what I love about it is it's, you know, there's just enough mystery, magical realism history, love, it's like all of that wrapped into one and that, so that's why I loved it. But anyway, everybody, this book is called Love and Legacy, Amor Eterno, and I ta oh, talk about the artwork. I want to talk about the artwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, a fun story. Um, again, I was on the computer, on the internet doing research and I was trying to figure out what I would do for a cover and I had reached out to a couple of people that I knew that, you know, to see what kind of resources I could get. And this lady um, that's actually a best-selling author, and she happens to be in one of my best friend's um, book clubs, she said, go to Barnes & Noble, take pictures of all of the books in your genre that speak to you, um, and then look at some of the stuff that they, look at the themes that they have in common. And so I did that, um, and then I was looking at pictures of Spain online, and I came across this gorgeous photo, um, and if I, tried I've actually tried to look back and I can't find it again so it was just God's timing in my opinion you know yeah. but it's this house in ruins in the middle of a huge field and there's a dirt road that's leading up to it and uh, it's in Corral de Almaguer which is the setting of the story where my characters are from and I was like oh my gosh that's Catalina's house I was yeah. like I have to have that picture and so I have a very very talented family and um, I asked my cousin Jerry who is a, a, a really amazing artist um, both him and his brother are so talented in art and I asked him if he would um, if he could recreate that for me and he was like yeah absolutely um, and so his name is Jerry Santi Esteban and so he uh, took that picture. <laughs> I told him, okay, this is what I want. You know, um, I want a heart coming around it. I want it to be shooting stars and I want the stars to be stars, stars of David because ben Benjamin and Catalina are essentially the shooting stars, you know, in the story. And that's, you know, where a little bit of that magical realism comes, comes through. And so um, <clears throat> he was like, okay, okay, okay. So, you know, I gave him this sort of rudimentary version of my <laughs> terrible artwork <laughs> and then he just produced this amazing picture and so I was so so um, 
just, you know, taken aback by how he was able to bring the story to life. And, you know, I wanted a river because there's a, a scene with the river in it. And so he just transformed my vision and, and brought it to life. So, so well, yeah. I think it just makes it like even that more pers personal, you yes. know, to have a family member just, you know, bring your vision to life. I think that's just a beautiful thing. And um, yeah, I mean, that's the first thing that you see. And, you know, I love covers. I just love artwork. So I mean, it just draws you in. That's the first thing you see when you, you know, you see a book. You're like, oh, you know, so I love your picture and I wanted Thank to see you. You tell that story. Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's talk about, okay, so this book is the first book in a trilogy. Yes. Am I correct? Okay. Yes. And I can't wait for this next one. I mean, the way that you leave off in this book, I'm just like, oh my God, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm excited to read the next installment, but um, do you want to talk a little bit about what is what you have planned for the for the next two trilogy? Yeah. Sure. So the first one is sort of an introduction to both families. Ariana and Luke are the characters from uh, the present day. And we, you know, get to know who they are. We get to know their families. We get to know their own love story, which is kind of tumultuous throughout the whole entire first book. And, and then we get to know Benjamin and Catalina in a little bit of, in a little bit of uh, excerpts from things that they find um, in, in through their family histories. And so uh, the second two books are uh, more about Catalina and Benjamin and sort of bringing their love story to light, but they are, they're also told through Ariana and Luke and through some of the stuff that they're dealing with, you know, once, um, well, I won't tell the ending of the story of the first <laughs> book, but, you know, so they're still in, you know, both families are still involved. Um, and so the first story, again, is sort of an introduction to these ideas about Sephardic Judaism and the Inquisition and the patterns of migrations, you know, especially through um, New Mexico. And so the second book is the, the voyage, basically just Catalina's experience being on the ship. What, it, what was that like when leaving Spain and getting to Mexico City? And, and it's about Benjamin and what he goes through during that time while she's traveling. And so, <clears throat> and again, all told through the eyes of Luke and Ariana. And then the third story is um, the, the migration of uh, Juan de Oñate and his expedition from Mexico City into New Mexico. And Catalina and her new husband are on that, on that expedition. And so it's going to be, again, told through uh, the eyes of, of uh, Ariana and Luke. Um, and some of the stuff that they come across in their digging and in their research. And so um, it'll, you'll, you'll just find out a little bit more about why things happened and how things turned up at the end. So the final book is just going to tie uh, the first uh, chapter in the first book. And it's just going to come full, full circle in the end. I'm excited. I cannot wait for it. So I just had to point out really quickly, though, that there's a couple of scenes that I really loved in this book. But one of the scenes were when um, when Luke and Ariana go back to, when she takes Luke back to her hometown. Oh, yeah. You know, they go to the celebration. What is the celebration called? Santiago um, and Santana. Yes. Is that, is that a real, I was wondering, I'm like, is that a real yes. festival that happens? Oh yeah, and the way that I describe it in the book is the way that I remember it growing up. And actually like one of the last uh, times that I had gone to the fiestas um, in when I was in college, and you know this is a very very important celebration to the people from uh, northern new mexico and southern colorado uh it's i think a lot of the celebrations that we have back home sort of revolved around the church and saint james and saint anne were the parents of, of mary the mother of jesus and so the, they they're the patron saints of the town and so they every year in, at the end of july the town is probably about 800 people and it triples in size when people come from all over the country and all over the state of Colorado to just reunite with their families. And so there's lots of reunions, there's lots of, you know, vendors, there's uh, entertainment, you know, and of course there's mass and there's a huge barbecue afterwards with a lot of, um, you know, different types of food. And, you know, people just come together to, to celebrate. There's a parade that happens on both days. And so the way that I describe it in the book is exactly the way that I remember it when I was growing up with people well, you know just, yeah, being shoulder to shoulder and done tons of food and all these activities, carnival, all kinds of fun stuff happening at the same time. And so I just wanted to to bring that back and just talk about what a, an important celebration that is to the town and to the people. Yeah, well, I just love the way that you drew me in, you know, you drew me in and I felt like, you know, this felt warm and it felt like home, you know, and even yeah. though I'm not, you know, 
haven't experienced that. Everyone's like, oh, just drew me in. And I'm like, I want to go there. So <laughs> much like, fun. Well, so much fun. Go, you know, and that's how you know it's good good writing and great storytelling when you actually do that, that, you know, does that for the reader. So you did a really good job with that. And, you know, the settings in Spain and just all these, it was just great. So everybody, you have to, you have to read this book. You will really thoroughly enjoy it. Um, so do you want to do a reading? Sure. Wanna do sure. I will read um, the last paragraph in chapter one. Um, and this is about Catalina and they've just experienced um, some tragedy with the Inquisition uh, in Corral de Almaguer, um, so it starts. Catalina walked back into her home and was relieved that her family wasn't there. She took a deep breath as she considered her life now as it lay before her. She threw her satchel with her diary in it on her bed and slid to the floor. She was spent, hollow. In the last six months, the sun had risen and set with Benjamin. And just a few hours ago, she had felt the paradox of a lifetime of love with him and the precarious journey into the unknown. She leaned her head on her bed and stretched out her feet on the rug that covered the stone floor, focusing unsuccessfully on the newly plastered white seat ceiling. She strained to make out the texture with her eyes, fatigued and blurred, begging for an easier target to focus on. Her mind fought them, not able to bear another second of seeing images of Benjamin and wondering whether or not he would come back for her. The voices of her family returning home startled her. She heard her mother and her father speaking of the Carpa house. She shuddered at the thought that it might be their house the Inquisition may attack next. She needed to rest and pray to El Dio that when she awoke, this would all have been a horrific nightmare. Yeah, it's such a tragedy, but then you're just like, you're rooting for them. You're rooting for love the whole throughout the whole story, you know, for both couples. But yeah, it's, it's a great book, everybody. Thanks for doing Thank that. You. For us um yeah so like i said where can where can we get this book where can everybody buy this book so it's on amazon if you search love and legacy amor eterno you search for my name do google search in the books department in amazon and you'll find it so do you think that you'll be doing any more um or any book signings here once covid kind of lets up a little bit is that in your plans i would love that um i was <laughs> i'm sorry so people could meet you in person. Oh, I would love that so much. Um, I had plans to go meet the people, um, I think with uh, Las Comadres Book Club in May with Karen, and hopefully I can reschedule to do that. Um, I was supposed to, uh, I was actually scheduled twice, once in March and then once in October when COVID uh, started. I was supposed to go to the Colorado Hispanic Genealogical Society. And of course, with COVID, they canceled the March one. And so we rescheduled for October. And of course, you know, still dealing with COVID. So uh, that one was canceled too. So I, I'm hoping to get at least those back on the docket and, and more, um, you know, just through Calma, I'm hoping that we can do lots of different series of book signings and, um, you know, workshops and conferences where we can meet people and introduce our work to, to everyone. So, so yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Yeah, that'd be great. And then, uh, so for those of you that don't know, Kim is actually one of the founding members of Calma. And you want to talk a little bit about it, Kim? And then I want to talk about one last thing before we go. Sure. Um, the Colorado Alliance for Latino Mentors and Authors. I'm so excited to have been brought aboard this, this great organization. Um, you know, I know Christina and Frank Davila and Arturo Jimenez were having a conversation about their work and um, the kind of struggles that they had been through to get their work published and, and out there and then brought a lot of the rest of us on board. And, um, and it's just been such a, an awesome experience uh, from the time that I've met everyone and we've been working together. There's so much energy, so many uh, just positive, uh, you know, ideas that are floating around and we just can't wait to like put this stuff into action you know and one of the things that we've already done is the website and so excited about our launch next week you know to meet all the other authors from colorado and um and you know again once COVID is done just the, the you know the there's just so much that we can do the the potential is so much it's, it's so great and so I'm really excited to be a part of this just some really amazing humble, modest, <laughs> talented people in this group. And, you know, I, I just, um, it, it has made this whole experience through the past few months 
it's so heartwarming and, and, and uh, it kind of made it go a lot faster for me. And we're so excited about it and we're blessed to have you on board too, because you know, we're all working hard, um, but we all need, you know, we all have different perspectives and our own little twists and um, our own talents that we bring to the table. So you definitely are one of those um, and we're, we're happy to have you on board. Um, I know that once you did talk about um, you possibly being your own publishing house. Do you have any updates on that? Or <laughs> I am so excited about that. You know, it's, uh, again, it's one of those things that's in the works uh, and something that I've just been doing a lot of research about and trying to learn as much as I can about because, you know, it's a new field, it's a new industry. And so I, uh, I, I have a couple of authors that I've been talking to and, you know, it's just, getting started, you know, helping them. That's really my goal with it, with the, the publishing companies to promote work that needs to be marketed and, and put out there. You know, I, I, I would love to just put the La Gente Legacy stamp on it, but really my goal is just to make sure that these deserving uh, novels and, you know, poems that they get published and that people have the opportunity to read them. You know, again, I, I said this in a different interview, who's waiting for those stories? You know, who mm -hmm. is sitting there waiting to, to see themselves, you know, in written in a book? And so I, um, I just, I really uh, hope that that, you know, can come sooner than later. I'll just put it that way, you know? And so I, I'm, I'm working behind the scenes. It's taking a little bit of time, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll get there pretty soon. I, again, I have a, a couple of authors that I'm working with at the moment that that we're hoping to get this underway, so. Well, I'm excited about that, and um, you're a busy lady. <laughs> you do Very. it all, you do it all. But yeah, so, I, so like I said, I can't wait till the next book. I encourage everybody to pick it up. I just wanted to end with this. Let me see if I could find it here. Um, also, if you do get the book, I, I like to remind people, especially because, you know, you're an indie author, we're indie authors, uh, we don't have as much exposure as you know, the, some of the writers out there. Um, so it's really important if people purchase the books on Amazon that they leave a review. Um, yes. you know, people really look at that. So I want to read my review of your book. Yay, um, thank you. Okay, I said, captivating. Love and Legacy will captivate you in many ways. Storyline is a perfect combination of mystery and magic. I was fully invested after reading the first couple of chapters. Like the author and the main character, I too have roots from Southern Colorado that made me wonder about my own geneal genealogy. Chapter 13 made me want to visit San Luis in all its quaintness. The main characters share an amazing destiny. You will find yourself rooting for their love throughout the entire book. Kimberly Sanchez Cawthorn is a true storyteller and an important voice in modern Latino literature. I can't wait to read the second installment of this love story and other works by this author. I just wanted to say that. Thank you so much. That was so beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. I I think the world of you and you're, you're such a talent and I'm learning a lot from you too so thank it's you been, uh, it's been a real pleasure just you know being friends and working on some of this stuff together so yeah and and talking about modest I'm like that's why I was like Kim you have to put your book out there we need to promote your book too I mean, I mean that's a fine line between being modest and you know being that being that voice you know so it's important for us to we have to put our work out there too you know it's true it's true you know but i was like i talk about my book all the time i did a radio show i put, posted that on there but you know you're right we do we have to we, we have to help each other yeah so. and then also you're a part of the Kalma series so this will be you know part of that so that's that's kind of a separate thing too so i just wanted to make sure that everybody got a chance to meet you know who you are learn about your book um read the title of your book and yeah, so if anybody wants more information about Kimberly Sanchez Cawthorn, um, you can go to the Calma website and that's www.calma, C-A-L-M-A, C-O, dot org. And you can go under the author's um, tab and Kimberly has her short bio there and there's links where you can get her book and all that more information about Kimberly on our website. And there's also a link to Instagram, um, to the La Gente Legacy Facebook page, and the La Gente Legacy uh, YouTube channel, where I've been doing all these videos for San Luis Valley, uh, successful in the San Luis Valley, and now the Calma series. And so, 
yeah, take a look and enjoy all the amazing, inspiring stories of the people that uh, have been interviewed all summer. And you're you're one of those amazing people, Kim. So thank, thank you. you. If you guys want to get a hold of Kim, you're on Instagram as well, right? Yes, so Kim Sanchez Cawthorn. Yes, and she'll respond to you if you guys have questions about writing or about her book or anything. Kim is she's a wealth of knowledge. She's she's done a lot and she's doing a lot and going to do a lot. So um, get a hold of Kim, and I'm sure she'll she'll help you. She'll be happy to do that. Thank so, you. Well, thank you, Kim, so much for taking the time to do this. I, I like I said, I wanted everybody to get to meet you and learn about your book. book and well deserved. Congratulations on everything, everything you've done, and everything that you're gonna do. Can't wait to see. Well, thank you, Christina. Right <laughs> Such a pleasure to talk with you, and I'm so grateful that you decided to to interview me. <laughs> and, I'm like, I'm not the best, but I'm like. The, table that definitely turned but you know we no you're know. awesome you are <laughs> <Our best. laughs> all right Kim. well thank you so much and we'll thank talk you. to you soon. take care talk to you soon bye-bye Thank you everybody for watching. This has been a La Gente Legacy production and successful in the SLV and the Calma series.